Welcome to section three, where we're finally going to design something. But first I gotta cover shape language. So here we go. We're going to go back to preschool and learn about the basic shapes because they're important in terms of defining the silhouette for your character. That is the first read to your design. And it's important to make it memorable, to make it unique. If you think about the most iconic characters that we have in pop culture today, for example, Mickey Mouse, the iconic shape of his head and two ears is recognizable globally, actually. So we're gonna start with the basic shapes and some of the shapes that you can incorporate into your character to give them a specific feel or read that fits your character description. So let's see, the basic shapes are the circle, the square, and the triangle. So how do you use them in a design sense? Well, let's cover the circle first. From a design perspective, circles include all round shapes. That's circles, ovals, and ellipses. All right, so let's take a look at some of these very flat graphical images that I put together quickly using entirely round shapes. And think about kind of what they make you feel about the character or the mood that it gives off. So this first one on the left here, when you look at it, you're probably thinking cute, friendly, cuddly, like a teddy bear. And the one in the middle, you're probably thinking soft, squishy, and pleasant, like a cloud. And this last one is a little bit abstract, but it looks funky, bubbly, and fun. And so that covers circles. Generally speaking, they're softer, they're friendlier, and they're more approachable in terms of shape. And so if you use a lot of circles in your character, they will in turn look like they're more friendly and approachable. Next, we have squares. And squares include basically all quads, uh, rectangles, rhomboids, squares. You can go up in the number of sides as well. These general rules still apply. So if we look at these shapes that I put together, this first one on the left looks sturdy, reliable, and foundational because the rectangular shapes are wide and they're short and they're symmetrically stacked on top of each other. The edges are all parallel and they're perpendicular to each other. The second one looks sleek, futuristic, urban, industrial. Now the feeling changed because the rectangles are now no longer wide and flat. They're a lot more vertical. They're higher, they're skinnier. Um, so they look a lot sleeker. And finally, this last one doesn't have any perpendicular sides or parallel sides, and it comes off as dangerous, dynamic, and unstable. So depending on how you use the square shapes in your character, they can give off a completely different feel. And finally, we look at triangles. This includes all types of triangles, including equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. And here are some of the basic shapes that I put together. The first one here is stable, strong, and important. It looks like a Christmas tree. I mean, let's face it, if you have a Christmas tree in your house, it's probably one of the first things that you see when you walk into your room. Second one is a little bit more asymmetrically arranged. You've got fast and dynamic. They're all pointing in the same direction. And if you look at existing fighter jets, they're mainly triangular shaped because it's an aerodynamic shape and therefore associated with speed. And this last one here comes off as threatening, broken, and chaotic because they're just scattered triangles pointing at something ambiguous. Imagine there was a person there. Maybe the person is being eaten by something. All right, so those are the three main basic shapes that you can use in your designs to come up with a silhouette, which in turn is your primary shape or the primary shapes in your design. Now we're gonna take a look at secondary and tertiary shapes. 
Now, what exactly are these? Well, in order to demonstrate what they are, I'm going to introduce you to one of my characters, Yuan Shuya, or Shuya, if you prefer. She's one of my characters from a cyberpunk horror series that I'm working on. And this is her original design. I'm going to zoom in slightly. So if we look at her design as is, she has a very round head. So the round head implies that she can be friendly and kind of cute. And then the rest of her body is more of just a rectangular shape. Her upper body is a trapezoid and her lower body is basically a long rectangle. It gives off the impression that at first read, she's friendly and she's reliable. But she's also got a giant sword on her back, which breaks her silhouette and is a much more dynamic and pointy shape. So she's cute, she's reliable, but she, if she has a good reason to, she will beat you up, is sort of the general feel. Now, what are secondary and tertiary shapes? If we zoom in a little bit further, you see that her jacket is split up into different parts because there are seams on a jacket, right? And these seams create secondary shapes, which for the most part here in her original design are also square. And if we look a little bit closer at her halter top here, her halter top has the yin yang symbol on it, which is a circle. Again, indicates something that is more approachable and friendly. But if we move down to sort of her pants, the cut on her pants is a little bit more dynamic in shape and looks a little bit more triangular, which implies a little bit of danger and a little bit of instability. And then the sword on her back, of course, doesn't have any perpendicular lines, so it implies a little bit more danger. Now, tertiary shapes are even smaller than the secondary shapes. They're like the zipper heads, like the shape of her zippers, right? Or the shape of her belt buckles, if I had any. So how do we change that? Well, let's look, take a look at my first iteration here. Going with circles. And I changed all of the secondary and tertiary shapes into circles. Her jacket is now a puffy jacket. Her zipper heads have turned into circular zippers. And I gave her a belt with a circular buckle. The seams on her pants are now also rounded and her pockets are rounded. So if we look at her general feel, she's a little bit more friendly and a little cuter, even though she's frowning and scowling. So uh, in contrast to original design, this design is friendly and approachable and cute. But if you give her a good reason, she will still beat you up because again, her primary shapes indicate that she's got a giant sword on her back. So she has the capability to kick your butt. And the next iteration here is the square. So if we look at this design, I've changed all of the segments on her jacket into straight lines and changed the design on her halter top into rectangles. Also, I've changed the seams on her pants into things that are, that are generally parallel to the ground. Right, so she looks a lot more stable now. So from this read, it seems more like she's cute, she's very reliable, but if you give her a very good reason, she will also beat you up. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the triangular design. So everything now here, all the seams on her jacket and her pants are triangular. There's nothing that's really parallel to the ground and nothing's really flowing in the exact same direction. She looks a lot more volatile here. So um, she'll probably beat you up at the first reason she gets. And so that's how you can play with your secondary and tertiary shapes to help you convey the type of character that you want to create. Before we move on to actually creating thumbnails for a character, I want to cover one more thing, which is motif shapes. And these are shapes that are important to different cultures, perhaps different religions, and they have very specific meanings. So this first one I'm going to use as an example is the Egyptian Ankh. Right? That's pretty recognizable. 
And the second one is a Celtic knot, which is also pretty recognizable. And finally, the yin-yang symbol from Taoism, which also features the octagon on the outside. And each of these symbols here with the three lines actually means something different. The top one here means heaven, and the bottom one here means earth. I don't remember exactly what the other ones mean, but they do all mean something. If we take a look at some of the references that I had in the previous section, these are also motif shapes. They were used in a lot of traditional Chinese patterns and designs, and they have very specific meanings. Now, the thing to keep in mind with these is to be sensitive about it. Use them with intention. And because they're usually religious or culturally significant symbols, you don't want to unintentionally offend people, a whole group of people, without knowing it. Uh, that would not be good. So be careful. Do, do your research and make sure you know exactly what you're doing when you're using them. Now we're going to get into the actual drawing of silhouettes. At this point in the design process, the whole pose of your character and the composition of the image isn't really all that important. The point now is to determine the primary shapes of your character silhouette. What I do in this step is turn on my symmetry tool, which is a little butterfly in the top bar, and I use a hard round brush from the inking section of my brush set, which you can download. And I just start designing. I start with a basic human shape. And on top of that, I'll create a new layer and start experimenting with the shape of her robes, how much I want to be dragging on the floor, how skinny I want to make the ankle section, and the different shapes and iterations of how I want to arrange her ribbons or her headdress. So at this point, just play around with the overall shape of the character. Remember to keep it cohesive. Remember to keep it readable. And don't go too crazy, but let your imagination flow. At one point or another, you're gonna be happy with the silhouette that you have. And at that point, we can move on to the next section. The shapes that I ended up settling with for this character are an interesting mix because I wanted her to come off as divine and someone who is to be revered, but at the same time feared and not quite volatile, but has the potential to be dangerous. So in order to drive home her whole divine feel, I decided to give her a sort of a halo on her head, but instead of a complete circle, which most halos are, I decided to break it up so that there's a piece of the halo that's broken off, but still sort of floating in midair. And then the rest of her headdress is a very pointy, almost antler-like shape, which is more of a triangular and dynamic shape that will give her more of a sense of danger. And then the rest of her robes, I wanted them to be more sleek rather than bigger and heavier, but at the same time, I didn't want them to be so tight that it made her look a little bit too sexy, uh, which isn't the feel that I wanted. So I settled for sort of a skinnier skirt at the bottom, but at the same time left a very baggy set of sleeves to support the rest of her silhouette. And around her, I gave her two different sets of ribbons just to give her more of an aura. So the assignment for this section is to pick the shapes that you want to use for your character design and start experimenting. Create your thumbnails, and at the end of this assignment, I want you to pick your favorite thumbnail so that we can move on to the next step and fill in some details. I'll see you in the next part.